Hi, this is Tammy, founder of Numbers Portugal. There are many people asking in the community that they want to know more about the team. In order to respond to the request, we have designed the Behind the Project podcast. Good afternoon, Kate and JC. It is really nice to have you here、um, with us for this podcast.、Um, so I think before we start. Um, maybe、um, Katie can give us a short introduction about yourself, and then also JC can give a, a, the audience some inter- basic introduction of yourself. Yeah, sure.、Um, hi, nice to meet you, Tammy.、Um, my name's Kate Peters. I'm a photographer based in London, and I work、um, producing my own series for exhibitions and books. But I also work. Commercially shooting for magazines and advertising brands, so kind of my time split between those two fields, really.、Um, it's a very interesting time because、um, it's now that a lot of、um, creators and photographers are exposed to the web three. So、uh, you're based in London. So how did you see that trend? Is there a lot of different photographers and and now getting into the web three? I think it's it's starting to become more widespread. I think photography as a medium, I think a lot of people are still fairly traditional in how they approach the medium. But I definitely have seen more and more people kind of engaging with that platform. There's a lot of hesitation. There's a lot、yeah. of skepticism. But on the whole, I think it, you know photography. It's a highly innovative field,、um, yeah. and there's always been people pushing the medium. They're using kind of people are beginning to embrace NFTs in a way that they haven't previously. Yeah, it's, gro- it's definitely、that's... growing. Yeah, yeah, that's cool.、Um, and JC,、uh, can you please also give a short introduction about yourself、uh, to the audience? Yeah.、Um, yes, I'm, I'm Jesse Ringham and. I've worked within the traditional arts industry、um, for for many a year, and、um, I've I've been working with、uh, Tate Gallery, with Serpentine in London,、um, you, with various NFT platforms as well,、um, and very numerous commercial galleries、um, and art fairs around the world.、Um, so I'm one of those people who have you know been very much working within digital and what it means to the art world. Um, and you know this whole、uh, surge of NFTs,、uh, blockchain, and how it's been used within the creative industry is just one of those things that you, you know, you have to have to ride. We're in a big change, you know, here, which is really exciting. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, so I have the same question for you.、Um, so how do you see like the traditional galleries?、Um, how they feel about this change, this wave in in Web three?、Uh, and then、uh, are they open to the new technologies? Well, it's really. I, I was talking to、um, a friend in the industry the other day about this, and you know, very much when social media came along, you know, specifically, you know, some of the some of the big. Um, social sharing apps.、Um, you know, a, a, a lot of the guys in the art world were like, "I don't have time for this." You know, this is something else.、Um, and you know, five, six years later, you know, everyone has embraced this form of communication. And and I feel, you know, the art industry now has been,、uh, you know, is an early adopter. You know, and you've seen it within the, you know, the auction houses, the major, major auction houses. You know, not just a small art gallery trying something new. But, you know, the big guys have adopted it. So I, I think it's it's really. I feel very proud of the industry to be one of the early adopters. You know, of of you know of technology of blockchain and what it means for artists.、Um, and I, and I think a lot of the galleries out there. You know, that they really realised、um, even ahead of the fashion industry, music industry, that you know art. Is giving artists access. It's、um, helping artists pay the bills, and and you know cutting out you know a lot of the、uh, the in between, and and so it's all about giving back to artists and helping them, you know,、uh, develop、uh, what they're doing really. So yeah, it's it's been great to see the art world embrace this. 
Yeah, so um, you, um, you talk about uh, social media uh, during your response. Um, so I'm, I'm currently actually in the NFTOA, and then uh, one day I talked to a person. Um, he's also a um, creator and has his own creations sharing on the social media. And then he said um, he believed that 2022 is going to be the year of the real photography NFTs or real creation NFTs, art NFTs, instead of uh, random NFTs. <laughs> so you know, yeah. a, a lot of which... Uh, it's very challenging to define them as art or anything, but these are the mainstream in the NFT at the moment. Um, so he, he told me that he truly believed that 2022 is going to be the year where the, uh, the artists uh, and the photographers, um, they will uh, just massively come into Web3 and then have their own space and um, choose their own technologies and then uh, embrace this uh, Web3 wave. And how's your opinion on that? Yeah, I would say it's, I think it's maturing so fast as well, where previously it was, you know, uh, quite frivolous and quite you know, surface level, some of the, some of the work going up there. Now it's expanding, and people are testing new skills, um, experimenting with data and NFTs, and and obviously, you know, within the art world, it's all about experimentation. Um, and then, in, in you know, in photographic senses as well, it's about you know um, access. And I think the, the only hurdle at the moment, um, you know, uh, for for many and you know, artists and Katie actually will probably speak about this is you know, understanding, you know, how to get involved, um, you know, having that knowledge with uh, technology. I mean, a lot of the museums and galleries have just got their head around, yeah. you know, digital and having a having a website team. And now this is, you know, very much obviously the next stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Kate, uh, what's your thought of the digital transformation in the art and photography field? Yeah, I think kind of like Jesse was saying, and I think kind of in sort of agreement to how the sort of the render NFTs sort of were the initial kind of things that have been seen. And I think a lot of photographers didn't really understand that and they didn't really see their place in that world. But I definitely, just on that point, I definitely think there's a big change there and lots of what I would consider kind of more traditional photographers are now embracing that platform and releasing editions and I think because some of the big names are now up there other people are thinking oh okay there there is an outlet for our work to be seen in that context and I think kind of in terms of digital transformation you know like it is an innovative field like that kind of mixing of science and art and people have always experimented and the medium has evolved with those kind of experimentations, like albeit in the darkroom with Man Ray or the kind of the Cottingley fairies and the kind of initial sort of image manipulation. And I think digital, it's, it's become another tool and it's just armed artists with new ways to experiment and to push the medium. And I think kind of like the sort of emergence of nfts are going to give people another way of experimenting with that digital technology um and i mean like photography it, it's always been quite an expensive medium i mean like buy, like when it was all analog buying film processing printing it was quite an inaccessible medium until kind of there was more widespread use of 35 mil cameras but in this sort of fine art arena people were shooting large format the kind of modernist photographers you know it was very much trying to echo painting and I think digital kind of gave people a much easier way into the medium it's really exciting to see where it goes I just think like that accessibility kind of combating that kind of the elitism of the art world um, is really <laughs> exciting yeah, yeah. Um, so I he I'm here in LA. Actually, uh, yesterday I met the uh, team from Special. Uh, you know, we have the Numberverse, and Numberverse is built on top of a software called Special. So that's a VR software. 
And then their marketing、uh, was in our booth and stand, standing there for a very long period of time. She she told me that she is really she really feel amazing about、uh, the、uh, the what's shown in the number verse because、uh, so when special was initially built, so there are not. Many、uh, real artwork showing in the virtual space, but actually it is a, a very good media because it allows、um, allows you to just easily create a virtual space and have the virtual gallery, and then you can also exhibit the. Um, the the work in the way you like and is much flexible、uh, and also people from all over the world they can get into that space and then experience it and even even better that they can use a VR headset to look around so、um, it's actually a very good media to let people to really experience and and then、uh, view the work so it's like、um, we're also、uh, very happy because.、Um, I mean,、uh, we think that numbers is、um, we position as more like a bridge between technology and、um, photos. So photos should be like everybody is very familiar with.、Um, but、uh, how do we introduce the new welfare technology to、uh, the audience and let them、uh, feel comfortable or feel、um, it's easy to use? So that's our mission. And then、uh, we we feel that it's really happening. So. Um, it, it's really really nice to to see that,、um, and uh, uh, the next question: uh, Do you, do you see any possibility other than just selling works in the NFT market? Yeah, I mean, I mean, what I've seen is, I think a lot of people from the outside, you know, there is a fear of change, and、um, when you don't know anything about the industry or what's going on, you you tend to resent it and.、Um, You know,、um, not saying that I do, but I think there is, you know, there is like a knee-jerk reaction to. And I think, you know, if you do embrace it, there is so many similarities between, you know, this world, the crypto world, and the art world. And I think one of the things, aside from just the selling, is, you know, there is,、um, a, there's a really strong sense of community within within this world that,、um, you know,、uh, Kate mentioned this point about. You know, elitism in the art world, and you know, it's a tough world to get into the traditional art world. You know, a you've got to have knowledge. You've got to have, you know, be lucky enough to have visited a museum or a gallery or been, you know, invited to one.、Um, you know, there's a lot of barriers there. But I think within the NFT, th- 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 there is this really beautiful community where people support each other, whether it's on Discord or on Twitter or even on Instagram, which is really interesting. Where you know the community that exists online is now looking at. You know, having、uh, you know almost like clubs that exist in real life, and so I, I love that and this strong spirit of being a patron. Yeah, yeah, definitely.、Um, and then I think different kind of technology,、uh, new technology, can really bring to、um, new experience, and that could be very interesting. And I remember yesterday,、um, I I walked around and then I saw DC. Um, so they actually have a very big room、uh, showcasing Batman. Yeah, so、um, there, there was a small table, and there was a guy、uh, sharing、um, sharing a pack of cards. Yes. So、uh, what they're doing is、um, so they issue、uh, many series of Batman cards.、Uh, now they add a little QR code,、um, so you can download an app. And then、uh, you can scan the QR code,、uh, and it will generate an NFT automatically and send it to your app. And then also in the app,、uh, you can、um, you can trade or、uh, you can sell the 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 card directly to、um, to people around you.、Uh, and then also there are some games which you can combine the NFT and the physical card together and to play those games. I、yeah. think that's very interesting, Tammy. I, 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 th- I think this goes back to this like collector DNA, and you get it whether it's collecting stamps, collecting coins.、Um, I had a few, you know, American friends when I was growing up, and they would collect baseball cards. They、yeah. would never open the box; it yeah, would always、yeah. remain in the box, untouched,、mm-hmm. under the bed for years, because there was this element of collecting, and it's a slightly different thing. But、uh, you, you know, this is where these guys have now grown up and. You know, NFTs have that same、uh, uniqueness, that value. It's 
it's um yeah, yeah. It's, it's a slightly different side to you know creativity and photography but it, that that dna that gene still exists i think and also they take up far less space than collecting the physical, <laughs> <laughs> physical things so your shelves aren't quite as full of like yeah. collectible items anymore yeah <laughs> and, and easily then, stored yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then yesterday when I saw that, um, I, uh, first uh, the first idea I had is, oh, that's super cool because a guy explaining it to us, like, so you can uh, traditionally can have that car, but now you can not only have that car, you can also have a digital twin, um, the NFT war. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And then I was thinking, so what if I trade the car through... Uh, trade the NFT through the app, but I don't give uh, people the physical car. <laughs> and, and then does that uh, count as a, a full transfer of the ownership of that item mm-hmm. or not, or only like half? So, yeah, so there are also some very interesting questions. Um, so, Kate, how do you think about like um, any possibilities other than just selling the work? Um, what's the potential of the NFT do you see? I think, again, to kind of echo Jesse, like they've really enabled kind of wider access to collecting, I think, for artists in kind of what is or can be considered like an elite or closed industry. And I think like the creative industries in particular and like the art world, it can seem really inaccessible. And it's difficult to break through like the already established hierarchies, like get access to the gatekeepers. And I think for a practitioner, that's really disheartening or can be kind of a stumbling block. And I think that kind of the NFT platforms, like they, it it looks set to disrupt that in a way and kind of it's leveling out the playing field. And I think that's sort of put a lot of people's noses out of joint that suddenly you don't have to be with a big gallery to sell work. Yeah. And I think I think that has what have made people doubt it in a way. Like you 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 can assign value to something that you know is established and already kind of has got that seal of approval. Whereas suddenly you've got this entirely open market and who who knows what's good anymore. It's up to you to make that decision on what you're going to collect. And and I think that's quite frightening, but also quite brilliant at the same time that it is now this really democratic um level playing field that anyone can access really with the right technology um and i think like as artists we've got to be curious we've got to explore these new new technologies or we're going to kind of miss out on these opportunities and and yeah from what i've seen already it's that kind of the patronism and like that idea of collectors supporting the artist, the photographer directly, that is so brilliant. And I think like the most people get into photography or producing art. It, it's not with making money as the kind of the driving force behind it. It's to produce work for yourself and to express ideas and kind of challenge things. And I think like so patrons have always enabled artists to do that and I think the NFT model is just a way of extending that to a lot more people and which I think yeah brilliant like once we can the kind of Luddites amongst us can overcome the technological hurdles I think it's going to open up a lot of possibilities. Yeah. Um, I have an extended question for Kate. So um, uh, as we discussed earlier, so NFT actually create a permanent uh, connection between the buyer and the creator. So um, if um, besides licensing the buyer um, with some rights to use your work, so what kind of relationship you think could be interesting um so after you sell an nft to someone and have that connection i think like if you're releasing work early on in a series maybe like you might put something out to kind of test the water and see Mm -hmm. how it's received and i think then as that series of work progresses like having that ongoing dialogue with someone could be really nice and also kind of releasing one of a set and then kind of more over time like you can kind of 
a kind of the or the collector can kind of go on that production of that work with you mm. and I think like Patreon has sort of got that model going and I think this is another way of using that that kind of the collector has access to things that other people don't and kind of mm-hmm. I think you can make it as much of a collaboration as much as a sort of relationship of as you would like and I think that's quite nice because I think if you're selling things through a gallery traditional gallery you're not normally in contact with the person who's bought the work mm-hmm. or not always and I think it's nice to see where things end up and I think my sort of hesitation is like what I love about photography is the kind of the physical object but I think like you were saying with the DC cards you you've still got the option of having that so I think then discussions like if people want to print the work you could then be advising the the owner of the NFT kind of where best to do that and like still kind of maintaining a bit of creative control. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. So um, um, during um, while you were uh, responding to the question, I was thinking, so yeah, so def- we, we could um, probably like um, designing it in the way that, um, so the NFT, uh, the NFT collector, they can have the access to the future work at when you at the early stage. So it's just like open to um, the collector who already love your work, uh, and then they can see it um, when when it's at the early stage, and then maybe even have some engagement with the the artist or creator. So um, that could be something very interesting. Um, and JC, how do you think about the the relationship? Like you're familiar with um, traditional galleries or museums, um, will, will they want to build any kind of long term relationship <laughs> with uh, with the collector or the visitors? Yeah, totally. Um, I, I think there's quite a few galleries out there that um, that will and already are very much involved um, as well. And I think I think um, it, it's such a fast moving. Um, you know, uh, um, genre at the moment that, you know, they're, they're going to have to get, they're going to have to really get with it, like Kate was saying. But um, it's, it's quite amazing with, um, you know, the relationship between the traditional gallery and digital has always been, well, it was very much one when I first got into the arts where mm-hmm. it's, you know, they are, the better you are at integrating the physical experience and the digital experience, the more successful uh, you'll become because then the public will love you. Um, yeah. And I think it will never take away. It's like when, you know, when, uh, uh, you know, stuff mo- streaming came into with the, the, the rise of Netflix. People were like, oh, my goodness, the cinemas are going to close and blah, blah, blah. And they didn't close. You know, people still go to the cinemas for the experience. You know, there are still shops and shops have had to adapt to become experiences rather than just getting stuff off the shelves. And I think, you know, the, the same thing applies to galleries, you know, and digital art and NFTs. They play with each other. And there's, there's I, you know, there's so many artists out there that are very keen to look at, you know, uh, what new tools they can be using uh, to develop. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think people get that. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, echo one of the uh, question that's very often asked uh, to me. Um, so people will ask, um, so um, what do you want to do in Web3 and is it going to replace any existing service in Web2? Um, but I actually always think um, the new technology is um, um, is supposed to bring the improvements to the existing technology and um, echoing what JC said. So like the digital experience is just to um, compensate some of the um, experience which is challenging to be achieved in the physical world and then bring a uh, the richer, richer experience uh, to the to the audience so that they can probably um, get into the really the spirit that uh, the creator would like to show to the audience um, um, yeah so 
Um, the the next question I would like to um, ask you: uh, There are some voices、um, in the NFT world saying that、um, the reason why NFT boom is so big is because、uh, in the Web two world, which is almost the last ten years or even longer, so、um, because the、uh, so、the free model, the ad model of social media, so、um, the Creators will create their own account, and but、um, it's very hard to monetize. However, it is widely spread through the social media, so it it makes people just like、uh, feel like、uh, I already see the creation. So why do I want to buy it? Because on social media is free.、Um, so my quest, first question is:、um, Do you think is that true?、Um, is Web two like? Truly bring that disadvantages to creators or photographers.、Um, maybe we can start from JC. Yeah, sure.、Um, yeah, I, I, I think. I mean, the, 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 the role of social media has just played such a, a, a crucial way to give people access to, you know,、um, especially the last couple of years, like to artists, you know, museums. You know, I've got a, a big part of my. Role over the last ten years is bringing social media into museums like Tate, and you know, and to art fairs and so forth, so people can experience art in a way that is really accessible and easier to not necessarily understand but enjoy. It, you know, social media is all about people sharing ideas and concepts. But I think now moving into you know、um, Web three is becoming you know、uh, it's a crucial saving grace because. You know the downside of social media is that a lot of news, a lot of the media has been taken away. You know, there and you know it's crisis management for a lot of the the world's publications, news publications, and they're trying to find subscription models and all sorts of things to keep their heads above water. Whereas you're moving into this other world now, where you know artists, magazines, people can start to monetize, you know, content because. You know, you're now buying into not just the visual、um, of what you're seeing on a social platform. You're buying into the concept and the story. And I think also, like it is, like Jesse was saying earlier, just that that collector gene. Like you, you can look at stuff on social media, but it, that's it's just、yeah. for a fleeting moment. You haven't.、Um, Viewing things on social media is like an extension of that. Social media is a great place to kind of advertise it, but then. You can you can own it and you can have it for yourself.、Um, also, just going back to what you were talking about previously with like、um, the sort of traditional way of viewing work, I was sort of thinking when you were speaking, like kind of the VR model it is really exciting because one of the things that I think is a stumbling block in big cities is like the cost of a traditional gallery space. I mean, like proper. Bricks and mortar, white cube spaces. That's inaccessible for sort of gallerists to rent a large space to show large works. But effectively, with the kind of VR headset, you could rent a broom cupboard on Oxford Street and invite、yeah. people in, and they can view something in a much bigger arena, albeit virtually, but still an experience. And I think that kind of Is making it more accessible and and quite exciting and and interesting. Yeah, but just like now in LA, people can use a headset and then viewing your work, and then you are actually in London, so it's like、um, increase the accessibility a lot. Absolutely. Just, just pick up what, what Katie was saying. There, I think with with VR, what I've noticed is that、um, I saw I saw a VR project the other day.、Um, In, in England, we have every year there's a city of culture, and they get elected as you know this is this year's city of culture, and they have to put on an arts program like a festival. And one of the key things that came out was this VR program, which was experiencing、um, an element of uh, uh,、um, it was like eighties music. It was nightlife in the eighties, and these guys who you know were tr- going being transported back in time. To when they were in their teenage years and experiencing this new wave of music, and when they took the VR headset off, some of them were so emotional, and they were like, 
I felt like I was there. That was the most incredible thing. So, you know, you're unlocking, this goes back to art because it unlocks people's emotions. When you see a photograph of that moment captured, that moment in time, it's a memory. And, and VR is so interesting to see it had that same effect, but you're kind of almost feeling and touching and sensing what's going on around you. It's, um, yeah, it was really good to see because I've never seen that in VR previously. You're just looking around experiencing something, but it's more motive. Yeah, and then I, th I think there is also one thing with the VR, which is it forces you to see what's inside. Um, uh, only that, what well, only that environment. I mean, just like uh, even though if you visit a physical gallery or a museum and then look at the creations on the wall, but still, um, you know, you can chat with friends and you can um, just uh, use your mobile phone. And then, um, so it's still distracting, but <laughs> the VR headset just force you to stay inside and then really look at the, uh, the world showing there. Um, so that's also um, some... Um, very different experience than the physical gallery. Yeah. Yes, very true. Yeah, much so, more uh, intense. So um, the the last question I have is: um, so we of course talk, talk about uh, a lot of um, positive impact uh, potentially uh, may have in the welfare world. Um, how the technology can increase the engagement and so on, but. Um, all the uh, technology also has its uh, dark side. So is there anything uh, like in the web three technology which you think potentially you feel worried about? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, we are very much going into the world of unknown and, you know, and, and that brings an element of fear and not being in control. Um, you know, technology comes with a lot of responsibility um, it's moving very, very fast. And we're seeing in the US, especially, you know, within politics, people are getting very scared of the rise of such powerful uh, tech data giants, you know. So it comes with a lot of responsibility, uh, you know, to try and keep up with that speed. So that is scary for a lot of people, you know, how, you know, how information is distributed, you know, what you can trust, what you can't, you know. The big thing around fake news, is that a real image? Is that not... So I think I think things like that are, you know, scary for a lot of people. So having a solution there where it is, you know, guaranteed to be unique, it's trusted, it's, you know, it's, you know, utilizing elements of the blockchain, you know, using tech for good is 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 the most exciting thing there, really. So, you know, but there is also, like you were saying, Tammy, there's always the dark moments when you're going into a new phase of, 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 of technology, of development. Um, but I'm, I'm one of those positive things. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. You know, there is this, you know, the great thing about blockchain, you can track, you can trace, you know, you can, you, it, it always goes back to something that is unique, uh, whether it's a, you know, an address on the blockchain or it's a particular person. So, yeah. 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 I'm also the person I always think the optimistic side. So, for example, you mentioned about the fake news, misinformation problems. Um, a lot of audience probably already familiar with that. Uh, that's also some uh, issues that numbers was trying to address. Um, so, for example, like in, in the uh, in Internet 1.0, Internet 2.0, um, so it opens uh, a world where um, you can uh, talk to people in, in everywhere, not limited to the time, the location, and so on. Um, but um, it also um, uh, it also creates a problem such as the misinformation on the internet because now, so traditionally, only the news media can um, they will check and then research and then probably uh, publish the news. But then, uh, when you can, you are able to deliver the uh, information from anywhere to uh, anywhere globally and. Um, that information may lack of check or even spread intentionally um, and then try to spread the, the misinformation online. Um, but then eventually there will be new technology. So, for example, like uh, what we are trying to do to um, make sure the um, the photos are traceable, verifiable, so that uh, when it is delivered and you will be at least able to trace its history and when it was created. So uh, images on the internet is not 
just an image, but an image with a rich history. So um, that's also something, um, a solution which only the technology can provide. So just like technology, new technology always uh, create the positive side and the dark side and always bring the new problems, but then we will continuously evolve and there will always be uh, new tech team <laughs> to find new solutions uh, for, the, for the existing problems. Um, yeah, I think just jumping yeah. on that point about kind of, some of the the problems and I think from what I discussions I've had because it is such a new technology and things are being developed all the time I think people's worry are that but like is this going to still exist like what if that developer no longer updates that code I mean I don't know enough about it and like so you've you've bought something you've collected something and then the technology no longer exists for you to access it and I think that's one of the kind of conversations that people aren't understanding but then comparing it to sort of traditional art market like works of art are like fragile like a, a photograph can fade if it's not kept in the right conditions it's it's a piece of paper effectively that's perhaps less um stable than than kind of an nft so i think kind of that that argument is slightly void, but I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that is one of the hesitations that because it's so new, and I think you hear a lot about kind of newer tech companies coming in, doing these amazing things, particularly within kind of the um, medical profession, like developing these new things that can cure something, but then it, they've gone yeah. bust in a few months. So these people are left, they had this hope that something could save them and then... Yeah it's sort of swept from underneath them. And I think it's just, yeah, that that slight kind of not having mm. complete faith in, is this is this going to still be around if I invest my yeah. money here, if I, if I collect these things, or am I still going to be able to use them in a few years' time? I think that is one of the main kind of concerns. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. And I think that's also uh, one of the reasons why people have such high expectation of Web3 um, because uh, blockchain technology allows you to create an open database. I, I think everything recorded on blockchain is basically from my personal point of view, it's just an open database. So um, even though uh, the service provider, they shut down the service, um, but the record is still there, um, is still open and accessible. So um, there can always be the new service provider to continue and then um, to, to, to keep the, uh, the service, to keep the relationship. So I think that's why people are um, so have high expectation of uh, the web three technology. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think that's all the questions I um, I have for today. Um, so it's really really nice to um, to see you. Um, I, 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 actually, I was uh, about to say see, nice to see you in person finally, but then I realized no, it, it's just <laughs> a remote broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like yeah, yeah too familiar with the tool so like <laughs> meeting online just like meeting in person already um but anyway um yeah so um it's it's really nice to invite you to participate in this podcast and thank you very much for uh sharing the information to the audience thanks so much for having us yeah it's been a really interesting conversation learning lots all the time so thank you for inviting me thank yeah. you very much indeed thank you Tamara. Yeah, thank you.